Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett and today I've got a mixed bag of all sorts of workshop tips and tricks so let's get started. We'll start off with my marking gauge as some of them have two pins down here. Mine only has one and once in a while when I'm making mortise and tenons I need to mark a mortise or a tenon. Let me show you a quick little trick you can use. And there's a marking gauge for marking mortise and tenons. And all you need is a couple of common nails. And if you look closely, you'll see that they're sharpened. I just took a file and sharpened the edge. Now they're a little unbalanced. So, um, but basically all you do is hold it onto the wood. And normally I would have cut these down a little bit too. You can see that they're a little on the long side. Um, and I should have, I could have driven them further into the wood too. But uh, I like to keep them a little bit loose so that you can move them up and down with with a plier or something um, and to, to set them all you need to do is tap the end and you can set them pretty easily but you know what they do a pretty decent job uh, now this is pine so it tends to wander a bit but um, you know you can see that you can actually make I know it's a little hard to see on there but um, you can actually make double lines using something like that pretty quick and simple so really easy to make the handle. Of course, you just set your lines that you want to have your mortise how how far apart, um, and then. I'm using this uh, new little alley tool, little uh, punch that I got not long ago, and all you do is set that on the line where you want to drill a hole, and and you put a couple of little wax in there, and it gives an inset so that you have a place. For your drill to go into, your drill bit to go into, uh, and that way you get nice precision drilling. So uh, that's a handy little tool. I'll put a link in the description for that one. Here's a tip from Colin from Wales, uh, and he says that he lost some tips, some rubber tips on the ends of some of his clamps. So what he uses, you can buy these, you're all familiar with these, these are just little felt pads, but you know what, they're sticky on the back, they have sticky backs on them, and he says you can just put those on your clamps, and look, I'm even doing it on my C-clamp, because sometimes I want to clamp something pretty firmly, and I don't want to mar the finish on it, and look at how quick and easy those are you can get those at the dollar store very often and look what a quick way of putting some kind of padding on your clamps it doesn't stay up and you can put it on any of these clamps and these things come in all sorts of different sizes they even come in sort of great big pads where you can cut your own size so that's a great tip thanks Colin and here's that paraffin wax that I talked about a few videos ago. Uh, and I use this all the time. It's easy to find. You can get it in your grocery store. It's inexpensive. Uh, and a brick like this is, this brick is probably five years old. And I use it on drawer slides, anything where it's a little bit sticky. Sometimes I'll even use it on top of my table saw when I'm pushing my big sled across. It just makes it that much smoother. So a um, little handy thing to have in your workshop. Some time ago I made this plywood live edge piece of lumber and if you look closely I think that veneer is a 32nd of an inch. It's very very thin and you can see that it's still a tiny bit proud and here's what you can do because you don't want to sand this um, oak off of here because it's very thin you don't want to sand through that so here's what you do you can make marks like that all the way along and I'm going to make that a little bit more noticeable. And when you come to sand, you could never plane that. It's just you would go through that plywood in no time. So you take some very fine sandpaper. And look, when I go make a couple of passes, you can see that the marks on the live edge are going away, but the marks on the plywood are staying there. And that means that this is the live edge is still a little bit high. And this way, when you when the marks on the on the oak disappear and the art marks on the live edge, you know that you've got an even uh, an, an even balance between the oak and the live edge. So just a quick way of helping you so that you don't sand through that very, very thin veneer. 
Here's a little reminder from Paul on how to check your squares. Basically, I have a factory top along here, and I'm just using a piece of MDF, and I put my square on here, and what I'm going to do is draw a line down. Then I turn it around and put that line at the top. I, over, I intersect them right there and draw another line down there and at the bottom is what you look at to see how close they align. Now if you've been watching my channel for a while you'll know that I'm not a big fan of these combination squares. Uh, and basically the inexpensive ones sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not. More often they're not. Unless you start paying up in the um, $150, $200 price range, then you get accuracy. But I want to show you, and I found out the hard way um, that these are not accurate. So I'm going to show you, this is mine, and I'm going to show you how we check for square. So you get that as close all the way, and normally I would draw with a, a knife edge on there, but because you can't see it, I'm using a pencil and I'm going to go all the way down to the end. Now we flip it around like that and I'm going to put my glasses on to make sure I align that up right at the top. There we go. Let's see. Okay, and now, now remember this is a thick line. Now I'm going to show you a close-up down there of what that is. And there you can see that square is out about a sixteenth of an inch in 12 inches. Uh, and that's not unusual for an inexpensive combination square. Now if you're building fences or sheds or something like that, a sixteenth of an inch, who would care? But if you're building boxes or you're building picture frames, uh, furniture, anything like that, setting up the miter gauge on your table saw, setting up the fence on your jointer, setting up your router. If you're out a sixteenth of an inch, uh, you can never get any square edges. So it's very important that your square is absolutely square. So thanks for that, Paul. A good way of testing our squares. And look at this. This is a great little idea from Glenn. This is a little holder for squares. And just, it, I did, I'll show you how I did this. It's put a couple pieces of wood in there and look he attaches it to the side of his workbench. This is a great idea and look at that and now I know exactly where my squares are and it I what I really like is how uncluttered I hate having a cluttered top and this is a great way you always know where your squares are easy to put away you can put anything in there I can put my combination square in there if I use that or my fixed square which I use these all the time um, and I could put a couple of them down here but a great way of storing squares in fact you could probably even double them up so lots of neat things you could do with that's a great idea thanks Glenn now to make mine, I'm going to do it the easy way. Um, I'm just going to use some very thin, some of that thin plywood that I like to use um, and just glue some pieces on like that. And I've already checked this. It, my squares, all of my squares will fit nicely in there. So it's going to be perfect. So all I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue in there, just some CA glue, nothing fancy. I'm just going to spritz this now so it'll be like an instant gluing. I have to make sure I align it though. There, now that's glued. I'm going to do the same on this side. I got plenty of glue on there. Okay, do the same on the top. I'm going to spritz on both sides of that, and that will be done. There we go, and that's ready to go. <laughs> Let's put my squares in there like that. This tip was sent in by Mama C. And what she was doing was cutting some plexiglass. I'm not going to cut plexiglass because it's too hard to see. Instead, I've got some little tiny pieces that they'll actually work the same. Now, in her case, she was using toggle switches to hold her pieces down because it was just too close to the blade. You don't want to get your fingers in there. Uh, it's just a dangerous way of working. So she was using toggle clamps. And it's a great idea. But look, my 
uh, base of my sled is too thin to even for very small screws. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to augment what she was doing and I'm going to use some hot melt glue. And hot melt glue is a great way of augmenting things like this. You don't need a lot of it. it it attaches very quickly and very firmly. Now that's that's done on there. You could not lift that off of there. It would be very hard. But what I'm going to do now, because that's going to be, I'm going to use it as my stop because that's just where how I'm setting this up. And I'm just going to take a moment and attach some screws and now I can safely attach screws that I know aren't going to penetrate the bottom of my sled here. Now that I've attached my toggles, I can put my wood in, clamp it down, and now I can safely cut that wood. And there's a safe way of holding little pieces on your table saw sled uh, and keeping your fingers out of the way. Thanks, Mama C. That was a good tip. Well, that concludes my video for today. All sorts of tips and tricks to help you make things a little bit easier in the workshop. I'm Colin Connett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.